Okay, so hi everyone, it's okay, can you hear me? Well, you can hear me because the room is small anyway. So I'm Ankur, I work for, for the system management tool uh, team at SUSE, but actually everybody call, call us the JUST team because that's what we mainly do. We develop and maintain JUST that I guess all you know is the configuration system and also the installer for all OpenSUSE distributions and also for SUSE Linux Enterprise. And I want to present here uh, almost two years of just news. So you may be wondering why such a weird period of time, like almost two years, is actually because the just team has a tradition of uh, pre having a similar presentation on every open source conference with uh, all the news things that have happened since the previous one. And while preparing for this, I was checking, and the last time we did was actually in 2020. So it was not exactly OpenSUSE conference, but uh, OpenSUSE and LibreOffice conference. It was Oslo 20, not in Oslo at all, but uh, actually was fully online event. So there I did a similar presentation and I already covered all the, all the topics you can see on the slides. So if you are interested in any of those topics, I encourage you to just check the recorded version of, the, of that talk that is uh, available on internet, because I will try to start from there and to overlap as, as minimum as possible with that, with, with those topics. So let's jump into things that are really new since the uh, 2020 conference. And uh, in that regard, I would say the, uh, one of the parts of Jazz that received more love is auto Jazz. We have improved a lot uh, how we report errors in the profile. Uh, we added uh, many possibilities to have more dynamic profiles that change depending on the machine you are running it and so on. And we added uh, better tools for uh, checking what's for validating the, the, the profile and all that. But actually, there is already a talk uh, or, or just finished a talk about that in this same event that's by Emo. It's called something like, I have it here, getting the most of auto in 2022. So I know some of you are actually coming directly from, from, from that talk. Uh, so I will not waste your time by repeating what you can see there. So just if you were there, you already know that. If not, you can watch the recording and you will see all these new features, but in, yeah, in action, uh, putting them to work. So then we can actually just yes, skip this and jump to other part that also received quite some love, which is the network configuration in general. <coughs> and I would say the main highlight here is the support for the network manager during the installation. Because, well, I guess you know that when while you are installing OpenSUSE, uh, if you have a complex network setup or you need to configure wireless or you have several interfaces with, I don't know, static IPs, complex uh, routing, whatever, you can do all that during installation and the system is already configured. But then uh, one of the latest steps is that you have to choose whether you want to have Wicket or Network Manager in the final system to configure the network. And since the installer itself, while running, use Wicked, if you selected Wicked also for your final, uh, uh, for your installed operating system, all this that, uh, network setup you did was simply copied, and that's fine. So on first reboot of the new system, you have your network fully set up. But if you selected Network Manager in the resulting system, you lost all what you did during installation, and you had to kind of re redo everything from scratch. Uh, using the network uh, manager tools. But that's not the case anymore. Now the installer, although it's still using Wicked during the installation process, it knows how to translate all those configurations to network manager. So no matter what you select as the, as the system to manage the network in your final installation, you will get the same configuration you use during installation because the installer knows how to, how to translate that into network manager. And actually, you even have one more option because now you can choose between uh, network manager, widget, or none. In case you you want a super minimal system or you want to try some unsupported but available option like uh, system D, network D, for example, now you can do it. And also other parts of the network configuration that we improve and are probably worth mentioning is that we have uh, streamlined some of the configuration dialogues that were a little bit more cumbersome than they needed to be. So now it's easier to configure the wireless and also to configure VLANs. And last but not least, we improved a little the, the general speed of the hosting by catching some system calls that we were doing too much. 
Another aspect that also improve, we improved and we gave more options during installation is that now you can uh, choose the major Linux security module. Traditionally, in, in OpenSUSE, we have been uh, focusing on App Armor, but now with uh, new distributions and new products, like for example in MicroS, they are switching to C Linux. So now, depending on the product you are installing or, or the operating system, even depending on the on the system role you have selected, you may have the option to select what is the major Linux security module you want to install between non, App Armor, or C Linux. What are the op available options and, and what is the <coughs> default option depends on, as I said, uh, even of the product role. But uh, for Lib, it's still App Armor as, as, as the only option, I believe. And for Thunderwood, you can select. And for C Linux, and for MicroS, you will have C Linux. And if you change it or if you play around and you decide to use C Linux, you can even configure the mode, which is permissive and Enforced, yeah, I don't use C Linux, as you can see, but whatever, you, you can already configure it from the installation. Another part of the installation that we also improved is actually something you may not, never have noticed that needed to be improved, which is uh, the initial analysis of the disk when we are checking what disks are available so you can later decide where to install and so on, um, because it basically worked fine if it found something weird like a for example, a disk with a type of partition table that is not recognized by the operating system. It just told you this is wrong, what do you want to do, do you want to continue or cancel. Also, when it found some encrypted device, it asks the user for the password in case the user wants to decrypt that device because they want to install on top. All that was fine for the general case where you have, I don't know, a couple of disks. But turns out we have users that install uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise or, or OpenSUSE in system with dozens of these, hundreds of these. So imagine you have 56 disks that are data disks and are attached to the machine, but they use some string format for the partition table that's, that the distribution doesn't recognize. So it will find the first one and will tell you, okay, there is a weird partition table. What should I do? Oh, yes, continue. And then we'll find the second disk and we'll ask you. And same again, like 54 more times. That was kind of annoying for very big customers. So we have improved that and now the, all the errors found during analysis are actually presented uh, at a single point in time and with an interface that allows you to browse through the list um, one by one and same happens with the encryption dialog for opening the device. Now they have, it's simpler actually, easier to read and have more options like skip, skip all, and so on. So you can really, you don't need to skip every one of the 56 encrypted devices until you can proceed. And also in, in, in this kind of enterprise setups, it's kind of usual to have S390 mainframes. And I'm not sure if you know, but the, in those uh, systems, there are a special kind of disk that are called dust, that also need some previous steps, some activation, formatting, and so on. And it's also useful that they have dozens of those and previously uh, with Jazz it was a little bit cumbersome when you have more than eight to format it and, and to attach them to the system. Now we have a new interface, it's more parallel, the interface actually even makes sense, not like the previous one and the whole process is, is better summarized and, and you, you can do all that much better. So all that is actually at the very beginning of the installation. Well, it may also affect if you run the partitioner or, or, or just bootloader in an installed system, but basically during installation is especially relevant before you get to the point where you tell uh, the installer when, where do you want to install and all that. And for that, you know that we have this, we have the guided setup and all that, but if you really want to go extreme in configuring things, we have the partitioner that is kind of our, one of the flagships of just somehow. And we have also been adding a lot of functionality to it in this couple of years, uh, maybe even too much for the interface we originally had. So we were adding so much functionality that we had to resync a bit without being super disrupted, but we have to resync a bit the interface. And uh, there is a screenshot here I could spend like half an hour talking just all the changes you can actually see if you look closely to this screenshot, but I will try to get uh, much shorter. So for example, uh, in the main table of devices, you can see now that we have nesting. So there is a, a, an LBN called system with several logical volumes like home or whatever, and one of them is root, 
that contains subvolumes, and you can see that all that is now displayed uh, nested in the in the table. And actually, that the subvolumes are displayed there because they have become like first-class citizens. Mm, previously, to modify the list of subvolumes of uh, better affairs, you you needed to go to some hidden dialogue uh, with a pop-up and what's not. Now the subvolumes are first-class citizens. And for example, I have selected root, and I have some options there, like editing, adding a sibling volume, or adding a subvolume, whatever. And you may miss some options there, like for example, resizing, and so on. So now we have, for all those things, we have a menu up on top. So there is a, this app entry and devices entry. There are way more options for every device you are selecting. There are many more options than before, but there were no room for more buttons, so now they are in a menu. Uh, we took the opportunity that now we have a menu to also place there some views, like the device graph or installation summary that were completely misplaced in the past in the left tree. It should be a, a tree of devices, so it seems like configuration didn't belong there, so now they have the O entry. Even there is a grayed out there that is says system issues. That's very related to what, to what I explained before, that we now report all the issues at once and you can navigate through them. Well, in this case, this screenshot was taken in a machine with no issues, but if something will have gone wrong, you will have there that report, not only on the, uh, at the beginning when it's shown, but at any later point of time, if you enter the partitioner, you have the full report and you can still navigate through the errors. We have a new section for TMPF file systems. We improve a lot NFS uh, integration, as I said, I could spend here a lot of time talking about things, but I will only highlight two more things about the partitioner. One is that we added support for bitrefresh volume quotas. By the way, I'm taking the opportunity here to also remember that uh, with Just you can have a text-based interface that is absolutely equivalent to the graphical one. So um, uh, you know that lately in most recent uh, open source distributions we are relying on, on better FS and subvolumes to, to basically structure the, the root file system. And that's uh, super powerful, but some people were missing when something from the time when we were using it with part doing it with partitions, that for example you could create the bar partition of a certain size to make sure it didn't grow too much, or same for TMP and all that. And actually, you can do that with uh, subvolume quotas. You can restrict the size of any given subvolume. So while you are creating, editing, formatting, whatever, a better FS file system, you have this enable subvolume quotas uh, check there. And if you do so, for every subvolume, you are able whether to limit or not the size to whatever size. And when you are also watching the, the whole list of subvolumes, now there are more columns that will tell you how much space a subvolume is using, um, how much space you will get back if you delete the subvolume, which is not necessarily the same number in BetterFS if there are snaps involved. And if you use BetterFS as apps and, and, and quotas, you know what I'm talking about. But you can ask me out later if you are curious. But yeah, there is not the same, the size of the subvolume and the size you will get back if you delete the subvolume. Uh, so all that you can configure it now with, with directly with Just, And the other big uh, feature that, uh, that I, will, I will highlight is the support for encrypting devices with Luxu. Uh, in Just, you have always had that uh, checkbox to encrypt a device. You can encrypt a physical volume, logical volume, whatever, a partition. And under the hood, uh, it, it simply asks you for the encryption password, and then it uses Lux, regular Lux1. But, um, there's also looks to what is more powerful, but it's also different in, in, in quite some ways to looks one. So it's uh, it's not just the newer version that is a direct, a direct replacement. It's actually, uh, well, it consumes a lot more memory, but that's by design. It's, it's, not, it's actually eating all your memory during the operation is a security feature. It is not supported by graph, so you cannot boot from a um, partition that is format as looks to. Um, so it's kind of more complex. There are more things that you would like to fine tune. So that's why the dialogue, if you select looks two instead of looks one, is uh, a little bit more complex. And actually, the functionality is hidden. It's only uh, visible if you run the partitioner in the install system or if you run the installation process using that special environment variable just looks two available. Um, because we really wanted all the people who is working in other areas of the 
distribution like TPM or uh, compatibility with UV keys for encryption or, or working on the bootloaders that mm, somehow they need to add support for all this to give us some feedback and to try it out or people who are really interested, but we didn't want to just put it in front of users that will just sing, looks two, looks, looks one, looks two, ah, looks two must be better. And then they cannot boot the system anymore because uh, the requirements are different. Oh, oh. Actually, if they try, just will tell them, you cannot have this, you need a separate boot to look with looks two because we have the full functionality, we even recognize when a setup is not valid and we advise what should be the correct setup, but in general, we decided it was uh, better to have some some yeah, uh, safety belt for people. So you need that special variable or during the installer you have plan B, which is using the new screen we have in the installer to configure the installer itself. So if this is available in a, as a small button at the beginning of the installation or at any point if you press press control alt shift c for configuration all just macros are always control alt shift something and this is c and you will get this special screen which is special because it's not actually about configuring the system you're installing it's about configuring the installer itself it's about configuring the installation process you can for example enable and disable uh, experimental features like look to you can uh, set the proxy, and even you have access to that expert console, which is a command line interface to interact with the installer. So you can check things on the installer, like what are, the, in that example, the list of repositories are being using. You can modify this, this repositories command has options to modify the list of the repositories that will be used by the installer. So many of the functionality we have been removing or simplifying in the installer because it was already too complex, we, kind of broke it back with this uh, special screen. So it's, of course, not intended for the regular user. Uh, we don't expect the regular user to find the Shift, Alt, Control, C combination. But in case you have any problem, it will allow us to help people to fix any situation. And talking about customizing or modifying the installer itself, this is another thing we also did. Uh, we added a new button that uh, may look like a sun or a moon, depending on or the theme you are using at that moment. But this is a special button that will allow you to toggle to all the different style sheets that are actually included in the, in, in the, in the ISO, in the installation ISO. Um, the, the goal is that they should be uh, changing the, the views will be useful for people who cannot see clearly. For example, if you are in a too dark uh, server room or too light one, or if you have some, some vision condition that uh, doesn't allow you to, to identify elements in the screen very well, you can use this button to change. For example, in a SLE, there is a dark theme and a light theme in addition to all those things that are also available in OpenSUSE, that uh, like high contrast one for people who has uh, some visual, people who's visually impaired or whatever. And if you see this and do you decide you want to contribute that you also want a dark theme for for OpenSUSE or you need to improve any of these. Um, there is also, has been already before, um, a special Just uh, module, which is called the Just Widget Demo, that you can find on that URL, that we improved it also a lot. We added more documentation and more screens, and it's basically a special Just client to be used by those who design the style sheets. So it has all kind of combinations of widgets with tabs, with uh, scroll bars, basically every widget or combination of widget you would eventually find in Just is there, so you can check that your style sheet actually behaves properly before we, we include it in the, in the ISO. So going beyond the installation itself, because I'm talking a lot about new features that on the installer, but actually uh, Just goes farther and is also the configuration tool. One of my favorites is this new, what we call the one-click migration from lib to uh, a SUSE Linux interface. It's slightly more than one click because you need to enter your registration code. But now that uh, OpenSUSE lib and SUSE Linux interface share the binaries, it's very easy to migrate from one to the other. So with this JAS module, it's even easier. You only have to enter your registration code. You click on migrate. It does all the operations. And then it tells you to reboot. Well, that will be actually the second click, the one on the reboot button. The reboot button and then your system reboot and it's already SUSE Linux interface. And the last thing, uh, the last big feature I, I would like to cover today is um, that we also revamped the all internally all the user management. It's this kind of uh, 
under the hood. And the change is maybe not that visible, as visible as others we have mentioned, but we were forced to it because you may believe that since doesn't change that much regarding how we manage users in, in Linux. It's a Unix after all, so it's a ETC password, ETC SADO and all that. But that's n not quite true. We have been introducing like uh, in, in these command line tools like user add, user group, and all those tools have been introducing chains little by little over the years. There are, for example, are features like, apart from user IDs and group IDs, we have sub group IDs and sub user IDs, for example, that are useful for containers. They, all these tools have also been changing the default values for configuration, even the name of the configuration parameters or where they are stored in different files and all that. So um, while doing all that, Let's say nobody cared about Just, so those chains were never incorporated to Just. Uh, so now the result was uh, quite different when you were creating a user with Just or creating it with user add. The result was actually too different. So we decided the best way to close the gap was to make Just, uh, to resync how Just worked and always rely on user add commands and so on, uh, user add group up mod and all that to make any change in the system so every new feature they introduce in those tools will be kind of available in just for free so we also adapted just to the new configuration places for all, all the new configuration parameters of user add and so on so now we hope that the, the gap is closed is, is well closed or almost closed and it will not open again in the future and this affects all aspects of, of creating user with just from installation to auto just to everything. And there are actually many more other features uh, we have added during these two years that I wanted to present, but uh, like for example, the new, the new installation summary at the end of uh, the installation now it's simpler and more informative, more precise, many things, but I decided I would save some minutes at the end of the presentation to so you other kind of news. It's not about since we have already introduced or new features, it's more about news about what is happening in the future, what we are working on. And in that area, my personal favorite will be that we have containerized Just. So uh, of course you know all the kind of things you can do to configure your system using Just, but of course for that you need Just installed on your system. That kind of makes sense, but that brings a uh, uh, some dependencies with it. So m most part of JAS are written in Ruby. Some of them are even written in Perl. So you need at least Ruby and sometimes even Perl to run JAS. And then uh, depending on the interface you want to use, if you want the text-based one, you need Encurses. If you know, if you want the full graphical one, you need Qt. Uh, so yeah, that's not uh, such a big dependency, but for example, if you're using MicroS or kind of a similar operating system that is aimed to be really small, that can be a problem. And actually, if you are using MicroS, you are already used to this new mindset that you are no longer installing RPMs and running, let's say, Linux processes, but you are only to downloading image and, uh, and, and running containers and managing your workload as containers. So, but even in that case, you may miss Just sometimes. Maybe you are used to do some things in the Just way, maybe for registration, for checking the logs, we have a very convenient uh, module for that or whatever. So now we developed a very small uh, cell script that is called Just in Container. The, in that URL, you can find the script and a lot of information about how it works and what the status, which module, which Just modules already work and whatnot. So it's basically a wrapper. You don't install Just, you don't install Ruby, you just install that a small script that's available as a package. And in, the, in a regular system, you could do, for example, Just software, and you get the software management part of Just in text, in text mode, or you do Just to software, and you get the same module, but in cute graphical mode. Here is the same, you just will run Just container software, and it will download a special image, it will run just in a container with a text-based interface. You see the packages that are installed, but you are, of course, not, not seeing the package in the container, but the package in the underlying system. And you can install any package, it will install the package in the underlying system, and when it's closed, it's gone. There is still no just in your system, but you were able to use it to configure it. And of course, if you use just two container, then that's the graphical version. It will download a bigger image, well, the, or the base image plus another image for with a whole QT and all that. So it will run fully graphical, exactly as if you were running just. When you are done, your system is configured, just is gone. Uh, so uh, not all modules work. 
right now it works uh, software, you can configure repositories, you can install software, you can register the system or add new uh, modules. You can, I believe, watch the system, uh, the system journals because uh, we have a very good module for that with filtering and wrapping uh, and all that. And we are deciding which modules should we port or which should we adapt next to also be able to this to run on this containerized mode. So that's a call for feedback, I guess. If if there's any module you would like to see, like I don't know, the partitioner. Maybe you don't need the partitioner, but you can run it in a container, partition your disk quit the partitioner, no, just yes, in the system. So whatever module you will find useful, just let us know, and that would be the next one we adapt. Um, we, it's easier to, add, to adapt that you may think. Due to the JAS internal architecture, we were managed, we managed to, to port four or five modules in a week. So it, others may be even impossible or more complicated, but in general, it's doable for our modules. You will just need to know which one will be more interesting for you. And in the same department of crazy ideas, we are also uh, uh, running another proof of concept that we are calling the installer. It's a working name, but as most working names, it will probably stay. So um, the idea is that uh, we have JAS, which we believe is a great installer and has a lot of uh, knowledge about the logic, internal logic about who you usually install a Linux system. But well, we have to admit that uh, uh, from the interface point of view, it's not exactly a modern thing. So we were thinking how we could reuse all the internal logic of those libraries, all the knowledge about how to install a system, but having a more fresh touch on it. So we decided to build um, uh, high-level APIs in the bus on top of the JAS uh, core. And by exposing that high-level device API, we were able to build a modern and a slick uh, web interface on top that looks really like uh, we are in 2022. And we even built a parallel command line script, so you can uh, command line interface. You, you can configure the installation on and drive the installation process with any of them, or even with both at the same time. Maybe use the command line interface to get updates of how the installation is going, but using the web interface to really do the configuration, like with your mouse and all that. So we are not saying this is the future for OpenSUSE or even for anything. It's just a proof of concept. We are just having fun. So if you also want to have fun, uh, join tomorrow's presentation by Ivan. He will show the, the installer. He will show the, the web interface, which is very nice, but you will not see it here. Here, you will have to go tomorrow to the other talk to see the interface in action and to see a live demo of how that web interface interacts with the Diva service and with a command line interface to perform the installation and to drive the process and all that. And with that, I basically done. I just want to say thank you and do a remark that all the information you have seen here, I actually took it from the JAS blog. So if you are a usual reader of the JAS blog, there were no news for you in this talk because you already knew all this. Uh, so we try to block often, uh, usually, well, we try to block every two weeks, but it's sometimes it's once a month, but generally we present all the ideas we are working, all the new features on all these even crazy ideas like containerizing JAS or the installer. So yes, follow us if you want to be always updated and you don't want to wait for the next OpenSUSE conference to get an update. And if you want to contact with uh, the developers or community and contributors of JAS, we have the usual channels. We have the mailing list on the IRC channel, so now I guess it's time for questions. Yeah. Questions first. <laughs> Depends on which area, for example, for users, what we did was basically relying on the new tools, even for changing the configuration. We are not changing the configuration tools anymore, but for example, user app has a special mode to adjust its own configuration. So we are not touching files anymore, we are always calling user app. And since user app is considered like the canonical way, so we are sure. In other areas of just, uh, we have tests in place, for example, when 
with this user merge, by the way, there is another talk about the user merge by Ludwig tomorrow that you should also be there. Uh, they, they are changing how, how some packages are packaged, so the configuration files are moving from being purely in ETC to be in user ETC and then in ETC and all that. For, and we have for that, for example, a continuous integration test that always checks factory and looks for new files appearing in user ETC. So we know that some package has changed, uh, some, a new package has gone through the user merge path. And so we detected and we um, analyzed if that impact any just module. And if so, we, we just add a to do to fix it. And if not, we just put it on a white list. So it, it really depends on the area that we have here. Some active checks, and sometimes we don't. It's what happened with users. We didn't have any active checks, so for years nobody told us that they were changing things, and we didn't know. But we tried to find it in advance. Sure, sure. Divas. As a feedback to us, how is the developer to uh, have the active uh, vehicle in every stack in the demo and at the end of the deployment of the runtime? So far, the plan is to only cover the installation part. Um, we are not sure if uh, in the future just uh, will be kind of uh, still uh, su such a relevant thing for configuring the red install system, especially that now the trend is more to minimal system and everything as a containers. But installation is, is, is not going away. I mean, uh, whatever, there, there is always bare metal installations in which you need all kind of uh, crazy adaptations to whatever hardware drivers and so on. So that's a scenario that in which we are identifying that Still, uh, nothing can be just in terms of functionality, although everybody is just in terms of uh, easy of use and all that. So, so far, our only plan is to cover installation with that device. And even, even we are designing the device interface in a way that we can even change all parts of just in the future. Even, for example, for package, for installing packages, we may decide to not create an API, a device API on top of just, but to simply go with package kit. So the idea is that device will be the line, but not always just will be behind. And we are, uh, for every um, API we, we are going to add, we really investigate and we research if there is already some company with a device interface that could do it. So we adopt that instead of adding just. And so that's, that's the plan. Uh, so far, it's just one. Actually, what we have is a container with the base Ruby and, and uh, all the just modules there. And actually, a separate one for Qt. So if you want Qt, uh, there is uh, well, a separate image on top of that image. Uh, but we are a very early research phase. Uh, we are just glad that it's possible to do so, <laughs> that we can really, uh, thanks to that uh, internal architecture I mentioned before, that it's possible to do it. As we grow the number of modules that we are adapting, we may consider to split it in smaller pieces. We still don't know exactly how it works, how, how it will work in the future. But we are all ears. I mean, we are really newbies in, contain, in the container area. So e everything we have done, I mean, we didn't, in general, in the just team, nobody knew, let's say, it's exaggerating a bit, but nobody knew how to call Docker. Uh, like uh, two months ago, okay? So it's a really investigation phase and all that. So whatever input about who is the best way. And also the part of the image are a bit too fat right now. It's like 300 something for the encourses one. And then if you want cute, you need another 700 megabytes on top. So sure some somebody with experience can help us to do it more modular and smaller and all that. So. The door is open, of course. Yeah, it, 
that, that kind of say, yeah, because what we are doing actually is um, we are mounting the host uh, OS into MNT, whatever, but uh, most of mm, just modules, the ones that are properly done internally, are prepared to actually not work on the current system but in a CH root one because it needs for installation. So uh, in most cases, if that's the case, it should simply work. But may sometimes uh, if the tool we rely on, for example, we are calling, uh, we, when we are calling CPR and RPM, we can do that because CPR and RPM are very good at working in a CH root. But other tool may not be that good and we may not, for example, may, the, all, most tools, most tools in the partitioner, for example, will also should work like that because usually tools for handling file system and all that are very well prepared to work in a shared root. But I don't know, there may be modules that rely on a on a binary that is actually not prepared, so it will be a lot of work to make it work. So yeah, it's really good. Basically, yeah, that's a good. That, that's a good rule of thumb. Everything that runs during installation should be containerized because it's actually the installation is a CH root uh, operation, which is basically what we are emulating with the, so basically everything you could do during installation, like the partitioner run, run in both places, just bootloader, so you can configure the bootloader during installation and you also have just bootloader in the final system. Basically everything that if you are moving around all the installation options is there and also in the stall system, those will be easy to, reasonably easy to containerize. Okay, so that's it. Thanks.